You know, um, three times this past week, I made a start on today's message. And three times I hit the delete button. I saved the paper. I don't think it. And after the deacon session that we had on Wednesday as a kind of follow up to our conference weekend, uh, I got in on Thursday morning and suddenly I knew what it was that I was going to speak on today. Mm. And uh, I want us to think today about serving. So this is not from our Readers One passage, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, even though it's got the wrong verses, it's, it's Acts chapter 7, looking at Stephen's um, speech and death. But today we're going to uh, look at a few stories really out of the Bible just briefly. I guess it's fitting on a Remembrance Sunday of taking time to remember those who have served in the forces during wartime. But I want to look at one person who showed how to serve. And as we look at Jesus, we must remember that we are followers, we are disciples of Jesus Christ. And that means that we should imitate him in our lives. Now whilst that can be hard, and I know it can be very hard, uh, it should certainly be attempted. Certainly something that we should work at and say, how can we be more like Christ in our lives? So, let's look at the Master for a few moments this morning. Uh, if you look through the four Gospels, I'm encouraged to do that. I did this about was it three, four years ago. I looked through all four Gospels and uh, studied how Jesus interacted and spoke with different people groups and so on. Uh, and I encourage you to do that. See how Jesus addressed people, spoke with people. Uh, reacted to people. And right the way through you see that he cared for them, that he showed love throughout his ministry by serving people. And this is God's Son. This is the Messiah. This is the one who is the teacher and the one who's going to die on the cross. And he spends much of his time serving I'm not even going to look at the part where he washed the disciples' feet. So this morning we're going to take a look at just a number of people that Jesus spent time with. People from really all walks of life and with different needs. And Jesus met with them, served them in some way, and their lives were changed forever. The first one I want to look at this morning we find in uh, Luke chapter 8 and verse 26 to 39. Uh, you can have a, a turn to that if you will and you'll see the story there as I uh, just go through it briefly. But again just see how Jesus interacted with the person uh, that is in focus in this particular story. Luke chapter 8 verse 26 to 39. And we're told about this man who is filled with evil spirits and they've taken hold of him and he was known in the whole area as someone who you just stay away from you just, you know, there's no point in getting near him you just keep clear of this guy he's, he's filled with evil and he lived amongst the gravestones in the graveyard and he would scream and he would shout vile stuff at people if they got near he would cut himself he would try to, the people would try to bind him up when they did get near him but he broke free and no one, just no one wanted to be near him except Jesus and we read the story how Jesus came near this man he served him in a way think of that Stopped, and he wanted to minister to this man. He had compassion on this man. And he loved and cared for people always, no matter who they were, what their background was, what they were like, he would still stop and he would serve them. And he wanted to help this man 
And so Jesus spoke to him and took control of the situation and cast out the evil from this poor man. Now, obviously, Jesus is God's Son. And he's strong enough spiritually to do that. And we always have to be careful when we're facing some spiritual opposition as to how we tackle that. But nonetheless, it's not something that we need to just run away from and shun. And when Jesus served this man in his life, you could see the change. I mean, just read the story. You can see the change come over this man. One person who no one else even cared about. Here he was, he was calm, he was grateful to Jesus, he had been served, he had been helped, and he wanted now to go and see other people and talk to them about someone who had literally saved him. You know, people who act differently to us, use some choice language that we would never use, are uh, morally different to us, are not to be shunned, are not to be ignored. That's what other people do. The Christ follower, the imitator of Jesus, with strength from the Holy Spirit, can serve even the vilest defendant because remember the hymn came to mind during the week the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon was saved. And so sometimes we can kind of be repelled against some people. And we might ask, well, what would Jesus do? Well, this storyline gives us the answer. We still need to love them and care for them and even serve them, that they might find Christ for themselves, and that they might be changed by him, not by us, by him. <coughs> then we come to uh, a woman who we looked at not that many weeks ago in John chapter 4, the Samaritan woman of the world. Uh, again, by all means, um, flick to it for a few moments remind yourself and see again how Jesus interacted with this lady. You know the woman's coming to the world for a drink and Jesus is there and he starts up this conversation with her. It's Jesus that starts up the conversation, not the woman. And I was thinking with this context that we're looking at today of serving people and so on and, and how we interact with people and, and get near them and etc. Um, I was kind of trying to think of a, a, a likeness, if you like, of Jesus meeting this Samaritan woman at the world. And it's certainly not a, a perfect um, likeness, I guess, but it's kind of like if we were in the middle of a high street, and, you know, in front of everyone, front of the wares or something like that, for everyone to see, and uh, there was obviously a a lady, so a Muslim lady who was dressed um, in her uh, Muslim clothes and we kind of went over and started up a conversation with her. Right in the middle of the high school. I wonder, you know, others might kind of, especially if they knew us, kind of think, well, what are they talking with that lady for? Um, and question why you would take time to stop and talk with someone like that. But we want to be a Christ follower. We want to imitate Jesus. And that's the kind of thing that he did all the time. Stop and talk with people that no one else really wanted to stop and talk with. Want to help them, serve them, show them the way, help them out in some way. I get very worried, perhaps that's a wild phrase, when Christians are posting things, particularly on the internet and Facebook, that are anti-Muslim. What would Jesus do? I don't think he'd do that. I think he would start a dialogue with them. I think he would encourage them. I think he would care for them. I think he would serve them. 
and not create barriers. Because Jesus not only talked to her, but he encouraged her to take steps in faith. And in those taking her steps in faith, she, of course, then, we know the story, she brought others uh, from her town, and everyone came up to Jesus, and what a difference in that town as a result of that. For serving those that aren't like-minded, even their spirituality is different. And to actually share with them, talk with them, uh, thinking about Ali and Sue, that lady, yeah, um, you know, she comes from a Jehovah's Witness background and so on. And uh, we can still talk with them, still care for them, still serve them in some way. <coughs> Third person I want to look at for a moment is found in Luke 18 and verse 35 to 43. And we discover this man, and again we refer to him not that long ago, this man who was blind. And he couldn't see to do anything, of course, being blind. And in those days, there, um, he would have spent his time outside of public buildings, putting out his hand, hoping that someone would drop some money into it, because there were no social benefit system in those days, there was no government um, funding to give those who were blind. Uh, they had to just find their own way in life and hope there was a family or someone that would help them out, but if there wasn't, they were on their own. And they just stood there and hoped that someone would have got in their hand. Um, and this man, therefore, would have been poor, he would have quite possibly been homeless. Uh, I'm sure he would have had old clothes on, perhaps unable to wash for a long while. And he lived from day to day just hoping that he could get enough money from begging <coughs> to get him through that day. So here was a man who had really nothing. No great status. No four-bed semi in the suburbs of Jerusalem. No good job. No expensive labor of clothing. And just remind you again to get this into context. Jesus was a very busy person. You know, he had about three years in ministry. Three years. And he had to train his disciples. He had to try and get people to understand throughout that country of Israel um, why he'd come, who he was, and so on. And he was struggling with that. People were, you know, disowning him and not understanding and so on. Uh, he was trying to address the religious leaders of that time and trying to help them work through the hypocrisy that they were going through and try to again get them to understand who he was and what God's purpose was. You know, that's a lot to do in three years. That's a big ask, if you like. And yet Jesus, time and time again, would stop for the single person in the street. In all his busyness. And so Jesus stops for this blind beggar. And there he is, ready to serve him. And he did it because, why did he? He did it because he loved God. He loved them. He didn't see them as some enemy, or someone to avoid, or someone who really wasn't on their same page as them, and so, and nothing to do with them. He just loved people. And if we want to be a true Christ follower, we need to follow Christ and his example. We need to imitate him. You know, that person that others avoid because they are socially awkward, because they let up a smell, 
because their disability means that you might be embarrassed in front of your friends by them. And we know people like that. And we get that question, well, what would Jesus do? The answer's here, in this passage. He would stop. He would interact with them. He would bring hope to them. He was not bothered by their awkwardness. He was not bothered about their background. He was not bothered by their aroma, by their beliefs, by their appearance. He just loved them and wanted to serve them. And we are Christ followers. And you know what that means, don't you? I could go on through all the pages of the, the Gospel and point out all sorts of people that God's Son, not just another human being, but God's Son, stopped and served and helped. <clears throat> you know, he took the little children, but even his disciples said, don't bother the master with them. Jesus took time to even serve the children. Oh, bless you. Right. Do you serve children? Do you serve social outcasts? Do you serve misfits? Jesus loves people. Not some people, all people. And you know what a follower of Jesus Christ should do? Follow Christ. It's a giant. And I really felt that was the challenge when I came on Sunday on Thursday morning. That was what God wanted me to tell you this morning. And I went through three different themes this week before I got this one. This is the one the Lord wanted me to preach. Why? I can only assume that there are people here that the Lord wants to challenge with this message. What would Jesus do? with the people that we will meet this way. Not just our friends, not just the nice people down the street or at work or whatever, but all the people that we meet this way. How do we become a better follower of Jesus Christ? I think this morning we found out. And I trust that the Lord will guide you this week as you meet with all sorts of people to love and care and yes sir those people let me bow in prayer Father I just felt so so constrained to give this message this morning so I believe that your spirit is going to minister to people's life. I pray that every one of us might be receptive to your spirit, that you might challenge us, uh, that you might just uh, shake us up a bit, that we might become more like Jesus in our lives. And those people this week that we were very, we will be tempted to walk across the other side of the room or the other side of the road and not talk to or serve. The Lord, just give us a prompting by your Spirit this way to actually walk over to them and speak with them and minister to them and bring something of your love to them. Father, we thank you for all the connections we talked about this morning. And we pray that this week we might make new connections new links that our prayer life might be so full of people who we want to pray about so that they come to know the Lord that our prayer times will get longer and longer 
Lord, thank you for your challenge. Thank you for your wound. We pray that we might have the strength for your spirit to carry out. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. So as we uh, conclude this morning, uh, we're going to sing our last song and we're going to take up our offering uh, as we bring our gifts to God uh, as a part of our worship. Who is there like you? And who else would give their life for me? Remember what Jesus has done for me and for you. Uh, we need to also serve others around us out of thankfulness for that.